What's going on guys? Welcome back to another daily YouTube video where we cover trading methods for EFC 24. Today's video is going to be covering some of the best investments for EFC 24. And there are a lot of them that you can make on the first day or two. Before we get into the video, of course, join our free trading discord where you can enter daily Patreon giveaways just by click clicking this button here. This giveaway has only been live for 30 minutes and already 40 people have entered. We're on our fifth day, so make sure you enter that and you just click this button every day and you'll be entered to win three days free Patreon. As you should all know, I'm a Twitch streamer. I stream twice daily, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. UK time when the game comes out, answering all your trading questions. So yeah, link to my free trading Discord in the description and my Twitch. Let's get straight into the video and let's look at the Discord list that I've composed for you or compiled even. It is not in any order. But I have compiled a list of almost around 70 cards, I want to say, that I think will be fantastic investments. And we're going to talk about these a little bit. First set of cards we're going to look at are the budget cards here. So the budget cards are cards that I believe will be between, that will be between zero to ten k on the first day. Martinelli, DRB. You can pause the video and have a look at this list how and when you like. And I'm going to just show you some examples of how these cards performed last year, and just to show you why I think they'll do well. So let's take a card from this list. We will take a card. The so DRB is a card which I think will do. Some of these cards will do better this year because they have big upgrades. Martinelli, a very good looking card. DRB, a very good looking card this year. We're going to look at last year, a card that performed well at the start will be, take a look. I believe Rafinha did well last year. So of course we're using last year's website or last year's database even. Rafinha has got a plus one this year as well, so it should do even better. And if you have a look how he did, oh, okay, we are on FIFA 23. We need to go to generations. Oh, it's just a change of the website layout. That's my bad. Uh, we need to fit the graph first. Here. As you can see here on Rafinha's graph, first day says he's 11k. First day was actually Wednesday, so you know who's under. You can see he got to a peak of 40k. That's clearly a good investment for those of you on a budget of under 10k. Okay. A few other cards that seem to do well every year. Uh, it's a card like the Pi. Of course, five star skillers always very high in demand at the start of the year. We like those a lot. So you see the Pi. He was chilling. Well, good few days under 10k and he got all the way up to okay that's pretty much a no-brainer for you guys on these investments honestly very hard to rank these some of these are going to be better than others frimpong has a crazy upgrade this year k looks good nunez is very fast nuno men's got a nice upgrade Kessie is looking good but he's in the saudi league Up Meccano, joel linton's decent one lamar can play multiple positions you got timo's obviously always got pace balde with a decent upgrade state max obviously in the saudi league but seems to do really well See, last year he did even better because he was in the Prem. But um, I'm sure he can have a similar rise. Five star skills and, of course, very high pace. See here, that's obviously in the Prem though. This shouldn't be as big a rise. The next tier are the mid tier cards. These are the cards I would prefer to invest in personally. I think these have a be much better rate of return. These are cards I believe will between, be between 10 and 90k on the first day. Uh, some of the top ones might be a bit over 100k, like Kavara, because he is 5 star 5, so I'm very OP now. Neymar will be on that border. Oshman probably will be under. And then, yeah, some cards got huge upgrades. Musial with a 10 pace boost. Liao looks great. And Kunku's now in the Prem. Cancelo is now at Barca. So I like the look of all these cards as investments. Ronaldo is much more affordable now, too. And the amount of people building the Saudi teams is a no brainer for me that this Ronaldo card would do well. I'm not even going to show you last year's Ronaldo because well, his card was completely different. Kunde. So yeah, I'm going to go through a few of these cards now and I'm going to show you the level of rise that you can get on these mid tier cards because it can be something quite, quite crazy. Let's take a card like Cancelo over here. Cancelo was of course in the Prem, so maybe he had a bit more demand, but I'd say Barcelona has a lot of demand too. And he can play left back and right back, which is huge, especially with the fact that you have no position modifiers. Yeah. Cards you can play on both sides. Very good trader in our stream called AVP. You guys will probably know, mention this. The cards which you can play in multiple positions will have more demand because there's no position modifiers you can just swap them very freely that makes a lot of sense right he started out at 26k probably was under 20k on the first day and look how high he got he got to 120k so you can see these mid tier cards have a lot more room to grow because as people move on from the cheap cards this is how it goes people will use these cards on the first day because they are the cheapest cards for the first week and then guess what they're going to upgrade their martinelli into a they're going to try and get Kavara or they're going to try and get Liao for the actual weekend league. They're going to try and improve, right? 
Then move on. So these cards, the reason why they, a lot of them die very early on is because people move on to bigger and better cards. That is why they're good for like low budget investments. If you get a nice rise, I would take the money. These are much, much safer investments here because they will have much more longevity. Card that is always doing good every year. Mr. Jota, five star week for of course, and very decent pace and in the Prem. Not to mention he can play striker too and left wing. So he has additional value this year with the three position modifiers. Look, he went all the way to 70k. Five star week for his big guys. Do not sleep on this one, okay? Do not, do not, do not. Um, Rashford always does well. Look how good Rashford did last year. I'm sure he did fantastically. Oh wait, Matt Rashford got a huge downgrade last year. I'm sure he still did well though. Oh, he was stuck at min price. He had, some of these cards will have weird price ranges where they get stuck. But he wasn't selling at 17k. Well, he was max price 17k and then they raised it. And then obviously he then came down because they took so long to change it. Be aware, some cards will get stuck. An example of a card which did get stuck last year with Varan. They put his price range way too high. And he was stuck at 65k, I want to say. But he was stuck at 100k for like a good few days. Then they fixed it and then obviously he started to crash because this card, so many people packed him and they couldn't sell him. So he just built up with supply. Paul Moani looking good now. Now at PSG. Gaze has a nice card. Not to mention he is in the Adidas promo. That The, the Nike promo, sorry. That doesn't mean he's going to be out of packs. You must remember this, guys. It's very, very important this year. This year, when a card has a promo card, Chiesa is another Nike promo. If they are in packs, you can still pack his gold. A lot of people are forgetting this or do not know this. It's very, very important. After pack investing will work, but you must sell before because you're only doing it because Timmy's do not know that these cards are in packs. Okay? Even when we used to do out of pack card investing, we would always sell before because it would always be over invested. This year, even more so because guess what? They're not actually leaving packs. So make sure you do that. Make sure you are aware. While Chiesa will have a night card on Friday, you can pack his gold card. So don't be tweeting. Don't be that clown on Twitter. Hey, compensation, compensation. I mean, farm the clout, farm the XP, whatever. But you know, you get what I'm saying? You can pack him. Kim and Jay is now buying card looking good. Kimi is a very good card to invest in. Look how well he did last year. There's a severe lack of elite right backs in that league. And I think he's also PSG, obviously. So there's not many good people, not many substitutions. 92 pace too, and always great in game. 25k, 75k, 3x, right? You then got other cards like Tomori. I mean, Tomori last year had in forms a bit different. I saw the next card I want to show you, who I, I'm a massive fan of. He's got a very nice card again this year, and it's Marcus Lorente. Marcus Lorente can play centre mid and right back and right mid. He can be used almost anywhere. Look how he did last year. He was at 20k, went all the way to 75k. Remember what AVP said. Lack of position modifier requirements. No one needs them. You can now slot him into these positions very, very easily. He has additional value. You can one game him a right back. Next game, you might want to change your team. You might, you might pack Hakimi and want to play him centre mid. Guess what? He still has value. He's still useful to you because you can just swap his position round. We then have Griezmann with a nice upgrade. He could be over 100k, not too sure. Same with Salah. Kyle Walker. This is my investment. This is my favorite investment every single year. You guys know how much I love the Kyle Walker PTG card if you were here last year. And guess who I love even more? Kyle Walker gold card. Guess what? Because there's no right back like him in the Prem. Man City, English, elite, elite pace. Look at this from last year. You could have gone for probably under 20k on the first day. Look how high he got. He got to 150k. Guess who was also in the Prem last year? Cancelo. Guess who's not in the Prem this year? Cancelo. So who is there only to get? Right back, Kyle Walker. Malo Gusto, yeah, sure, bro. Use your 75 rated. This is him. You need to buy one of these cards on the first day or two. I'm telling you right now, this is the exact card you need. I will 100% have the Kyle Walker in my club on day one or day two. I promise you that. That is my favorite investment. So if you made it to this point in the video, congrats. You have the best investment, in my opinion. It's Kyle Walker. But this is how good he did with Cancelo. Now there's no Cancelo. And there's no one else good. I ride back in the Hey guys, yeah, we're gonna be buying Carl Wolf. I love it. Saliba has a very OP card this year. He's basically the Varan. Alfonso Davies looking good with some of the new buying cards. We obviously have a ton of usable buying cards like Coman, Sane, um, Harry Kane's obviously moved to his cards, not the best. Goretzka, Hitmin J, 
um, up Makana, Neuer, you know, so well, they're all linked here. Furlan Mendy is always great, always does well. Look how well he did last year. But be careful of Furlan Mendy. He will rise for sure. He always does. And the Real Madrid card should do even well better this year. But you can see he actually started off even higher than some of these other cards. So look, if you compare this to what we just saw here, right, with uh, Kyle Walker, he started at 34k on Thursday. He only peaked at 112, right? See what Kyle Walker did. Kyle Walker started at lower. 25 and he peaked at 150. Prem, Man City, hype. Also, everyone thinks about Mendy. People don't always think about Walker. When people are thinking about the same card, you probably don't want to invest in it as much. And guess who's always been the best card to invest in the last few years? Or the safest bet? And who's everyone going to tell everyone to invest in? Or who are the noobs who don't know how to trade and invest in? Alan Mendy. So, with Carl Walker. Uh, Kimpembe always as well. And Tenali has a very, very nice card this year. I'm going to actually show you that one. It's on there. I think Tonali is going to be a fantastic investment this year. Mainly because he's now in the Prem. If he doesn't, doesn't want to load, please. There we go. Look at this card. That is a very solid CDM. We don't know his work rates. I hope he's medium high. 84 pace is great and then honestly, very well rounded stats. For a starter card, this card is amazing. Often done well on his previous cards. If you have a look in the Syria. Now don't forget, he's in the Premier League, so he has a lot more demand. I don't actually believe there's that many fast... Oh, what happened here last year? Okay, so he got he went from like 7k to extinct at 10k, clearly, and then they fixed his price range and he flew to 28k. Obviously, some cards are going to get stuck, it's how it's going to happen. EA always do this kind of thing. But I really like Tenali. Tenali might actually be my second favourite after Kyle Walker. Keep an eye on that. And then we have the expensive tier, which you just can't really go wrong with. These cards will just rise. The faster you can buy these cards, the better. These are the most OP cards in the game that people are going to work towards as an end goal. We have Haaland, obviously, Mbappe, Vinny, Valverde, BBD, Edda Militao, and Usman, who is now 86 and at PSG. You can't go wrong with investing in any of these cards, in my opinion. They will just rise. The earlier you can buy them, the better, but you probably won't be able to afford them. So that's why there's so few of them. These are the elite tier cards in the game. And these are just the male cards. There's something else I want to talk about right now. And that's why I have not, you might have noticed there's no female cards right that we've talked about. Well, there is a reason for that. Firstly, people are instinctively going to go for all the male cards because they obviously know more about the male cards. They're not going to think about the female cards. They're going to target the male cards first and then in the future, they're going to get bored or they're going to hear, oh, Gorilla is using Patellas. I'm going to go use Patellas, stuff like that. Instinctively, everyone's going to go for the, the, uh, the men. I think the men rise first and then you start to see which pros are using which females and you invest in them and they start to boom as well. I think the play is go for the males, let them rise. Once they've risen enough, you then reinvest in the women which haven't risen and look very good and then they should rise too later. So you can make a double investment, one step and two step. That's my current plan, my plan to do. But honestly, the reason why I didn't add women into the list is simply because there's too many and I also myself don't know enough about them. Of course, Patellas is good. She's five star, five star. There's a ton of good cards, right? But it's hard for me to rank them and it's hard for me to even put them on the list when you really see it have a list of 75 men. What you should also be aware of is very important. What's the difference between this year and last year? Well, we had no women in the game. We had half the amount of cards. So why are you expecting your Berlin Mendes Kyle Walkers to go from 25k to 100k? Guess what? It's now like double the amount of cards and double the amount of potential usable cards Rises might not be as high because there's a lot more cards in the game, a lot more alternatives. What you really need to do is find those cards with no alternatives. You need to find that English right back or that Prem right back where there is no good woman who is a right back or the left back, whatever. Whatever the position is, if you can find a male position, like for example, Hakimi and Kyle Walker always do well, right? There's no pretty much no substitutes for either of those cards in either league. The best right backs in both leagues by a mile and the rest are all pretty awful. If you check the league on and prem for male for the male for the woman sorry as well and there is no one good guess what you're onto some money there because there are no replacements. As soon as you get replacements you get slower rises and you get cards which don't move as much because people will use the alternatives and that's why they are clear. So that is basically that I'll throw through all these once again for you guys. Honestly you can take your pick of who you like and who you think will do well do think Martinelli would be great. I think Diaby would be fantastic with his pace. And now he's in the Prem. 
Um, let me just, I'm just going to tell you the ones quick five who I think are good. I like Martinelli, Diaby. I really like um, Primpong with this upgrade. Nuno Men's should do pretty well. Um, Essie should be okay. Not huge on any of the rest ones here. But mid tier, honestly, I like most of these. Kavar, Neymar, Oshiman, De Jong, Marquinhos, Musiala, Jude, Saka, Liao, and Kunku, Cancelo, Bala, Mane, Ronaldo, Kunde. Honestly, I like pretty much all the mid tier cards. Di Lorenzo should be good. Theo is always good. Kuman, Goretzka. You can't really go wrong with a single one of these mid tier cards, in my opinion. I'll tell you if there's one I'd probably avoid. And honestly, there's not even one I'd avoid. I think they're all fantastic investments and they all should have that rise that they had last year. These are some of the elite cards in the game for the mid tier, which will take time to move on from this tier to this tier because these cards will probably go to 300k plus very soon. These cards are the elite cards. There are no substitutes. There's only one BVD. There's only one Haaland, you know? There's only one Vinny. Who has a lot of hype. Valverde is a crack card this year. Edda Militao is fantastic. This card looks insane with his links too. And you got Usman who is always, look how expensive Usman is always every year. I know who's at Barca, but honestly at PSG he might even have more value. And also he's an 86 rated now. Look how well he did last year. He went from 35k all the way to 107. Five star, five star pays the bills guys. Especially at the start of the year. The pros love. So that is basically all that. As I said guys, Join our free trade in Discord, click this button every single day, and you'll be entered into a free three-day Patreon giveaway, which is this section of the Discord, where you get 10, uh, 10 uh, flips a day and multiple updates a day. I try and do four. And if you want to be a Twitch subscriber, you also unlock the Twitch subsection here. But yeah, just join the Discord, link in the description, and click this. As I said, I'm a Twitch streamer. I stream twice daily, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Come and ask any question you like on the stream. I'm here to help. I'm here to answer them. Yeah, honestly, this is probably the best place to come to come and learn every single day. Link for my Twitch is in the description. Make sure you give that a follow, guys, right? Other than that, guys, that's it for today. Those are all the cards which I think are fantastic investments. I know there's a lot. I know it's hard to pick. But what you can do is something very, very good with these cards. Some of these cards might have moved up a ton and other ones haven't. And you might be thinking, oh, Rick missed. No, Rick probably didn't miss. Rick thinks that when one card moves and one's gone up too much, guess what? You can go for the one which hasn't moved yet. That's why the list is so big. Pong might fly, Martinelli might fly because these are very hyped cards. However, Fakir might not have risen yet, so you can go for those after. Eventually, they should all move one by one, all right? Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. That was a very long video, but a very in-depth video. Hopefully, you learned a lot. Those are my favorite investments for EAFC 24. You make a lot of coins with these cards. The plan on when to sell these, we'll have to pay that by ear, depending on this promo on Friday that comes up, the night promo, and also with all the supply. But yeah, in general, we should be good. We should be making a lot of coins. Other than that, guys, Thank you for watching like subscribe share the video leave me some nice comments or not nice comments any comments any feedback i appreciate the nice comments is what i meant to say and yeah i'll catch you on the next one tomorrow have a fantastic day and thanks for watching peace